Welcome back to my craft room. My name is Whitney Lucas. I'm with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today's Facebook Live is going to be on this cute little spring umbrella. I'm just going to give you guys a few moments to come on into the Facebook Live. And we will then get started. I'm going to get my app started over here on to the right so I can see your comments as we go. Hi guys. Hi, hi Cheryl, hi Bobby, thanks for coming guys. Hi Patty, Lori. Congratulations, thanks Lori. There we go. Roseanne, Marilyn, Juanita, Kyle. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining. Tina from Pennsylvania. Hi, how you doing? All right. Okay, guys. Yeah, good to see you too. Hi, Marsha, Paula, Dell. Hi, everyone. Okay, guys. So you saw earlier in my last live that I showed you this cute little uh, umbrella that I got at Hobby Lobby a few weeks back. I know they still have a few. They come in pink and green. Love the umbrella sharing now. Thanks, Lita. Yes, guys, share. Share my video if you can. It helps out. Every little bit helps. Thanks, Bobby. I know I'm... I love knowing when you are alive. I was right here. Have fun. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, how'd the, uh, the messenger bot go? I got... Um, it's, it's a little weird to try to use it. There's not much, like, instructions on it. It's just, like, YouTube videos, so... YouTube's a good thing, right? To all my YouTube watchers watching this on the playback. Yep. I used YouTube a lot myself. <laughs> Alright, I was just messing with my flowers here. Hi, Andrea, Irene, Nancy. Nice. Okay, guys, so... Perfect, you got the message. Good, good, good. Okay. So this little uh, this little guy right here I got at Hobby Lobby about a couple weeks ago. This is the star foam I cut a little bit of. I need to cut more. Um, and it's normally 30 bucks. I believe I used a, I think at the time I bought it, I don't know what I used because it was a few weeks ago. Um, I got it for $17.99. Um, so not too bad. I'm sure their Easter goes 40% off soon. So... Uh, Every little bit counts on the discount, but it was just way too cute to pass up. It's already basically made for you. It's a little umbrella. The back of it's flat. It's going to lay perfectly flat against the door of the wall. I'm going to add a hanger to it in the back here because I don't want to hang it by this piece. It makes it a little uneven. I'm going to place a hanger back here. You guys are going to see me do that first so that it'll, um, you know, so it'll hang straight. It'll hang nicer on the door. It'll look cuter. And then this star foam is going to be a little exciting to see. I cut most of the star foam off of a really big block that I already have. I bought I buy really, really big blocks. I mean, they're like three feet long kind of blocks. Um, this is basically what the block looks like. I just cut it with one of my heat tools like this, except for it's like this, but it's it's like this big. I get it. I got it at Joann's. I usually wait till Joann's gives me that 60% off coupon. I see. Santa Maria, Mason, Whitney, glad to be here. Glad you're too, glad you're here too. Hi, Lana, Teresa, Marsha. Thanks for sharing. Perfect. Thank you, Cheryl and Marsha, for sharing. Got the messages. Good, good, good. Glad to know it's working right. <laughs> I don't have anybody to test it out on. My husband, believe it or not, does not have a Facebook page. He just never jumped on board with it. He's not a Facebook person. He watches my YouTube channel a lot, so sometimes... You guys might see him uh, responding some comments on YouTube for me, but he doesn't have a Facebook page, so I don't have a guinea pig, unless I try to use my sister. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that you guys are getting those messages. That's really good. Um, so the star foam I'm going to cut down first. I'm sorry, I'm going to put the, the hanger on the back of this first. Then I'm going to cut my star foam down, then I'm going to put these, these flowers in, you guys, and it's just going to look super cute. Now... I didn't grab any ribbon, but I'm actually thinking right now I'm going to probably add, because see, this isn't really super bright green. This is kind of like a really muted 
like a fern green, but it's not crazy bright green. Like, see these flowers here? That's super bright green. I'm going to add some to it, but I went and got some of these kind of muted, more muted green flowers to put in here because this is not a super bright, bright springy thing. So I didn't grab any ribbon. I'm just looking at my stash over here, but I think what I'm going to do, eh, I might go grab a couple things of ribbon and just have like something kind of hanging off of the side. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, sometimes, sometimes every arrangement doesn't need to have ribbon. I know that's kind of strange coming from me, but, uh, good, good guys got more messages. Cutting tulips as you watch. Perfect Debbie. Hey man, whatever. <laughs> it's exactly, I do the same thing. If I got a lot to do, I put on a video I like to watch and then it gets me through whatever I gotta, whatever I gotta do to get through the, the crafting day, especially if it's kind of like one of those monotonous things. Where you're cutting and cutting and folding and folding or, or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Um, in like the green instead of the pink. I did too. That's why I grabbed it. Thank you, Nancy. That's so nice. You like your ideas and my videos. Thank you. Okay, guys. So I'm going to put the hanger on first. I'm going to put all the, the star from and all the flowers in. And then I'll decide at the end if it needs some ribbon. I'm just thinking I don't want to put any in. I don't know why. Just one of those days. It's a nice day out. It was raining all day here in Vegas yesterday. Nice, just a nice constant rain. We haven't had that for a very, very, very long time. So this right here, guys, I'm going to make a hanger out of it. And I'll do this same exact thing on the back of my wreath sometimes if the wreath just doesn't hang right after I've made it. So basically I get this cord here, this, uh, what is this? It's just like uh, covered, I don't know what even it's covered in. It's like some sort of natural fiber it's covered in, this, this um, wire. And I believe you can get this in the floral, I bought this in the floral section at Michael's. And they still sell it, comes comes like this with a little hanger on it. I honestly don't have that anymore. I've had this roll for a very long time, you guys. It's much bigger when you buy it, but this is the best stuff that I like to use because it kind of looks a little natural, like it was part of the actual piece. I put this on a lot of my grapevine wreaths. Most majority of the time I don't put them on my wreaths, but if you if you if I do need one. By the time I'm done making a wreath, if something's just weird about the back of the grapevine, it won't hang right, I'll make it hanger out of this. So all I'm going to do is, um, what I like to do is I kind of like to double it up so it's a little bit stronger. Now this isn't going to be a heavy piece by any means because I've already stuffed it with um, grocery sacks and, or uh, well not grocery sacks, or Hobby Lobby sacks at the bottom and then tissue paper on the top. And then I'll pull some of that out so you guys can see what I did. All I did literally was just stuff it because we're not going to fill the whole thing with styrofoam. That would be a waste of your styrofoam. You don't want to do that. So I'm kind of just, just kind of eyeballing what I want here and I'm, I'm doubling it up. So I'll tell you if a measurement, I don't, I don't really measure most stuff. I just kind of eyeball it. So this is, um, it's eight inches. So you're going to need 16 inches total folded over. It's eight inches. And then there's my new clippers, if you guys didn't see in the last video for my uh, St. Patty's Day guy right here. I did a YouTube video for it. I got these new um, clippers, these wire cutters from Michaels. Because for the longest time, Michaels had the same type. They just weren't good quality. I didn't like them. Um, and this one actually spring-loaded. I went to a lot of the hardware stores. And I looked up some of the stuff that other people, other crafters, have suggested through Amazon on affiliate links. Tried to look at other things. I prefer wire cutters that are spring-loaded. Like these guys right here, I got at Joann's. There's nothing wrong with them. I just wanted a new set. Do you see how they have a little? They have a little spring right here in the middle. They spring back open for me, and I appreciate it. See, once I the the actual wire cutter stays open here, and then you use it to cut, and it opens back up for me. So it's important for me to have something that's spring loaded. A lot of the stuff that you see in the um, I just had that word right there in my mind, guys. Sorry, daylight savings time is messing with me. I needed that hour. I lost it. <laughs> um, a lot of the industrial ones, like for electrical use, the, the ones you can get in the hardware stores, they only open manually. So you have to train your hand to, to kind of hold it and open it back up. And I had a set like that, but I actually gave them to my husband because I couldn't use them. They were irritating me. I have car I had carpal tunnel. I had the surgeries back in my 20s. Um, everything is okay as far as the surgeries worked very well because I had very severe carpal tunnel in both of my hands from working with money at the bank. It was in banking for a while. Um, 
I mean, I was, um, I couldn't, I couldn't hold anything. I mean, I would drop my phone. I would drop the curling iron when I was curling my hair. I couldn't, I couldn't even drive for more than a few minutes without having to like shake my hands out. So the, the surgeries worked great, you guys. I don't have many issues anymore, but when my hands start to get fatigued, and of course we all know that from being crafters, making bows, different things like that, I need a pair of clippers that'll open for me. So I like this set. I didn't look at Joann's to see if they had these anymore because I bought these maybe, I don't know, eight, nine years ago at Joann's. They might still have these. Um, but I was super excited to see this new set at Michael's. It has a little lock here that you pull down and then it kind of stays open. So you gotta, gotta stretch your hand a little bit when you put them down, you know what I mean? Unless you're trying to just close them real quick and then open them, close them and open them. But I really like these. I've used them, I used them yesterday and the day before. I've only had them for a couple days. And I bought two of them. They're not exactly cheap, guys. They're like $24.99 for the set. But they're pretty heavy duty. They're pretty heavy duty. They're good, good quality. There's some grease on here, which I got on my shirt in the um, St. Patty's Day video. So just remember, you gotta oil all your stuff to keep it nice and working, but um, just my little ditty on a new set of uh, wire clippers. A lot of you guys like usually ask about them a lot when you see me using different wire clippers. So I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up that that's what we did. So for this one right here, now this since this isn't a wreath, this is gonna be a little bit different. Oh, you got rain for two days in Orange County. Yeah, I had had a lot of crazy rain here. And make it from the first video. Thanks, Nancy. You're so nice. Um, I love bind wire. It disappears in wreaths and baskets. Okay, is this what you call it? Bind wire? I love this stuff. It does. It looks really nice on the back of things. Make the hangers from copper. That's kind of cool. That sounds pretty. Joyce, no, you haven't missed much. I haven't started at all. I've just been yapping. You know, jibber jabber. <laughs> Let's see, I was asking about what clippers you used and saw it on your next video. Thank you. That's what I told my son I want for my birthday. Perfect. That works out good. Kathy, perfect. Nancy shows all the ball hangers on the mirror. Do you have a video on them? Nancy, yes, I do. Those hydrangea, where are we at here? The hydrangea ball hangers right here. It's, um, I have a YouTube video on them. It's one of the very first ones I did, so I'm actually super quiet in it. <laughs> But it's on my YouTube channel. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. I did a yellow and white one for my mother-in-law for Mother's Day last year. So I do have one on there. And then um, I have the purple and the coral color. The purple's on my Etsy on my Etsy page for sale. And then um, if you guys are interested in the purple, I also have a little tiny green one too, but I'm using that one for me. That was mine. <laughs> I used a different ribbon for it. But um, yeah, that's on my YouTube channel. You can check that out there, Nancy. Perfect, perfect. Kyle, I can't tell you how much I love learning from you. Perfect, thanks Kyle, it's so nice. All right guys, so I kind of bent it in half again. And what I normally do on a wreath is I will fill, I will push this through the grapevine and then have it twisted on itself. But I need to see how much room I have between this piece here since the construction of this. This thing is like sewn together with this type of cording. So I don't really have much room and I don't want to tear the cording. So I may have to just kind of make a hole, sort of make a bigger hole here in the fabric, the way they have the fabric coming through. So I'm just going to kind of try to feed this up from the inside. I'm going to take this tissue paper out. I'm going to see how I can get this to come up, guys. So give me one second and then I'll show you closer up on camera because I don't know. Never did this, you guys. So, and this, some of this pre-made stuff, you got to be a little careful with. Okay, it's working out. Okay, I'm basically feeding it up behind, in, in between the two pieces. And of course, I'm going to be feeding some some hot glue in here to keep this, you know, to secure it better once I get it. Sometimes the uh, the wrapping on the wire comes a little loose. That's fine. I cut it a little bit longer than I actually want it to be, but. going to argue with me just a little bit.
Hold on one sec, guys. It's not... Every once in a while, you just got to talk it through for what you want it to do for you. All right, so I'm going to bend it forward. I actually have this on the wrong side now that I'm looking at it. Okay, let's do it like this. See how this, it kind of it kind of unravels a lot. And that's kind of like the pain point of it. It's like not exactly user friendly, but it sort of is. I'm just going to dip a little bit of glue on the end of it. I'm going to wait until it gets a little tacky. And then I'm going to use my fingers and I'm just going to twist it on. That way it'll stop unraveling while I'm pushing it through. But like the way this thing is made, it's not, I wouldn't say it's delicate, but the, the wood here, it looks like it's not even, I don't think it's real wood, you guys. I can see a wire through the back of it. So I don't know if that's real wood or not, but whatever. I'll work. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. And actually the glue kind of dried a little bit too much. Just kind of letting it dry a little bit and then testing it out with your fingers. I mean, majority of us know hot glue burns. You get kind of kind of immune to it. So I just got the glue a little tacky. I don't even know if you can see that on camera. I got it tacky to the point where I could just kind of twist it around so that wasn't like crazy um, crazy hot. And then that way you can you'd be able to stick your stick your fingers on it, touch it, and um, kind of twist it on a little bit easier. It's a kind of a thicker gauge wire too, so remember that for when you're trying to uh, it's, it's, giving, it's giving me difficulty guys, but I think it's an important step because I don't want to hang it by this top piece here. So give me a couple minutes guys. This is going to It's going to be a problem child for me, so let me let me yell at it and ground it for a couple days. Hold on one sec. See, I can get it through, but then the uh There we go. There's those lovely times, you guys, where your project doesn't agree with you. It's the very first thing. That's I don't know if that's a good thing or not, guys. <laughs> this is a very, the very first thing I started, and it's not really agreeing with me. All right, I'm just gonna glue it like this and let it dry. Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Irene, you made the hydrangea ball hanger. That's pretty. Um, Susan, my YouTube channel is the same as my Facebook page. It's Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. So just go to YouTube and type in Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and you'll find all my videos. And also there's a link to it on my Facebook homepage. Um, if you need to, you go to the website link and you'll see the, the YouTube link in there. Turn, uh, turn the twine around. Yeah, I twisted it, but it's still coming apart. So I'm just gluing it. I just put some hot glue on it. Now it should work pretty good. Yep, Melissa, you made it in time. We are just starting because this little guy is going to be a problem. It's giving me an issue. And all I'm doing is just adding a hanger to it. You haven't really done much to it. All right, I can get the wire through, but All 
Okay, so I'm going to modify it a little bit because it's being it's being difficult. So this isn't your average application of a, of a door hanger or, a, you know, putting a hanger on the back of anything. When I'm doing it on grapevine wreaths, it doesn't give me as big of a problem. So hold on real, real quick, guys. I'm going to show you what I did and we'll have to go from here. It's not really a good representation of what I'm doing. I'm just modifying it because it's actually making me angry. <laughs> You ever get that piece of the craft project that just doesn't want to agree with you? So you're like, all right, I got you. But I will win. Otherwise, you just use regular wire because it seems like this wire is giving me more of a problem. It's a little bit thicker. It's also not your average, like I said, it's not your average project that... I mainly use this on grapevine wreaths, and it works out great on grapevine wreaths. And on this one, it wants to be difficult. You'd be able to put that around. Yeah, okay. So, to modify it, I'm just going to use some of this green floral wire here. And just a little bit, guys, we are going to actually start <laughs> the arrangement, if it would agree with me. All right, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm like basically kind of sewing it on with wire on the right side where I couldn't get the loose pieces to agree with me. And obviously this floral wire is much, much thinner and it's working out okay. It's green, doesn't necessarily matter. It's not going to show. Um, and it seems to understand exactly what I want it to do. So we're gonna stick with it because it's agreeing with me today. Half the time, you guys, when you see these cute little weird, you know, not your not your average everyday pieces like this umbrella, you just can't say no to it. That's basically when I find, you know, new ways of doing stuff just because, you know, it, it argues with you. It doesn't, it doesn't want to agree with you. Stuff like that. It's just like kind of fun to discover how you're going to get around it in a different way. And then also, if you just get stuck, that's when it's time to watch videos. So hopefully this video will help some of you guys in the long run, but let me, uh, let me argue with it just a couple more minutes or seconds. And I'll give you a close up and show you exactly what I've done. I'm twisting it here and then I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, so normally what I do Twist this under more. Normally what I do here is I twist this. There. And unless you have a really big door, like over the door hanger, the real thick wide ones, this isn't going to work for it unless you make your wire. Just, you know, adjust your amount of wire for the size of the hanger you're going to use or just assume someone's either going to hang it on a, hail, a, a nail, a command strip, which isn't that big, or even a thinner over the door hanger. You can get them for like three bucks at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. They're like about that wide, the little white ones. So basically that's what I added to the back of it. So I put that loop and then I twist it here. So this is basically how it will hang, okay? And the problem I was having in here was getting it through the top piece to get it through these two pieces here. There's probably another route you can take as far as wrapping it around the actual handle here of this, the stem of the umbrella. I don't want to hang it by the stem 
If you see here, or the handle of the umbrella, it's not a perfect handle. It's not going to hang correctly. It won't be um, straight up and down. If we're getting it more of a point, the center, like basically that center of gravity, but you could say my arrangement's going to be here. So even if I have flowers that aren't going to balance it on either side here and here, I'm hanging it more towards the middle on the back of it so that hopefully my point, my, you know, my goal is to not cover this up with flowers. I'm not going to guarantee that's going to happen because I like to add a lot of flowers. But um, the point is, is that if you've got flowers here, I don't need to worry about balance because I'm hanging it more towards where most of the weight's going to be. Most of the weight's going to be distributed across this piece of the, of the metal. And it has a wire frame in it. If you can see, you know, deep in here, that's what gives it its cute little shape. But um, this piece right down here in the middle and then across is where there's more metal too. So I'm just pretending my hand is the wall. You see that? And it's going to hang pretty straight. So that's what I did. But then on this side here, I had to argue with it just a little bit. And I used uh, green floral wire and you can kind of barely see it like right to... Actually, you can't see it from the back at all. You can only see it from right here up on top on the on the on the top. So, it's not crazy horrible, and that's just how I made it work. Cuz normally it's not this difficult to get these things on, but again, like I said before, guys, I'm used to only doing it on um grapevine wreaths. If I have a particularly unbalanced grapevine wreath, there's like, you know, more of a, 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 a the heavier sign or I've got a lot of flowers or a lot of, a lot of something on one side that's got a lot more weight to it. That's basically where I will, um, that's basically when I would end up putting on one of these hangers. It's just to help, help things hang straight. If you got a crazy unbalanced wreath and it just won't hang right, put a hanger on the back of it and, uh, it'll make, it'll make things much easier. Okay, so small battle one, right? We'll see what happens with the rest of it. You got a lot of dust in here. You see here, guys, these are Hobby Lobby sacks because I wanted the bottom to be poofy. I want it to still keep its, um, I want it to be kind of firm. I don't want it to kind of sink in or get baggy. If it gets humid like it did rain here yesterday, you know, certain fabrics, certain woods and stuff like that, they'll swell and they'll get... They'll, they'll kind of change in shape, and I don't want this to get baggy because we're definitely not filling the whole thing with styrofoam. That would be such a waste of styrofoam. Especially since styrofoam is sort of expensive. At least out here where I'm at, styrofoam's expensive. So I'm just stuffing more tissue paper on top, and I'm really just pushing it down as far as I can get it. So that's basically what I'm doing with the majority of it. Put in here whatever makes you happy. Just remember that... It's not exactly see-through, like you can see through that a little bit, but we're going to put styrofoam and then the flowers. I don't want to take away from this, this right here either, but we got to put it low enough. We have to put it low enough in here so that um, you don't see just the green styrofoam sticking up from above these cute little um, diamond, tri triangle little diamond things. It's too, too cute to cover up, too cute to cover up. And it looks like some of my... Um, Threading is coming apart right here. Let me see if I can tie it in a knot while I'm talking to you guys. Otherwise, it's going to be um, glue central. All right, I got one side. I have very little, um, very little slack to, to work with, so I'm using my pliers to try to tie this knot. <laughs> See how it works. What I had to do on the bottom, you guys, is I needed to, I had to use craft glue, um, because hot glue will dry clear, but it's just kind of not very neat. So I had to use craft glue on the bottom because my, um, my threading kind of came off a little bit. Looks like I'm going to have to do that on a couple other pieces. And if, you, if you're not familiar, the craft glue and the, you know, the, the, it's just the wet white glue and it turns clear once it's dry. That stuff takes a minute to dry. I don't even know if you can see that right here. I had to put a bunch of craft, craft glue on this last night to get it to dry right so the pieces weren't coming off because a lot of it unraveled on the end. 
I'll have to do that again. I'm not going to have you guys sit and wait and watch me try to tie that little knot. But just be careful. I guess when you buy it, just take a peek and look. Because if you see here, it's starting to unravel. Just a little bit. So I might go through and like craft glue. Like just paint craft glue on the whole thing. It didn't get super shiny. But... Just something to remember that this this threading might not be um, long lasting. We'll see how it goes. It seems to be an integral part of the construction, so too cute to not, to not try, right? All right, guys. So here we go. Now is the time for me to try to get this guy to fit in here. So I only cut it. I have a heated tool that I use, and I put it in my garage because the smell of burning styrofoam is horrible. It is absolutely horrible. So, <clears throat> oh, Amanda, perfect. You couldn't watch but the live, but now I'm here. Yay. Oh, it is live. We are live, Amanda. So you're good to go. Um, Let's see. I wonder if you could think custom prints using a disassembled tomato cage. Uh, maybe. Helen, that's actually po a really good possibility because, you know, you'd actually have a good market because people like me would buy that from you. <laughs> Um, oh, you bought one of those from Hobby Lobby. I keep looking at those, but think a real umbrella would be pretty too. True. Yeah, it would be very true. I think there's a lot more to a real umbrella as far as getting things to like, you know, add up. I know, um, Terry Marshall from Mill and Dill Designs. She has a really good, um, tutorial on it, on using one of the, the craft umbrellas from Hobby Lobby that is super cute. Um, and making that into a, in, into an arrangement. I'm cutting the edges off of the front. I'm kind of shaving it down little by little just to see how much I need to pull off. And I still need to pull a lot more off of this corner here. I've been meaning to go back to the dollar store and get like a bread knife. Because it's a lot easier to cut with a bread knife than it is, you know, star foam is easier to cut with a bread knife than it is with my, my, basically got a box cutter open all the way is how I'm actually trying to do this. This one, also another thing where it's one of those really odd shaped pieces that you're going to have to do a lot of, like, Custom cutting, custom. It's going to take a little bit of el elbow grease to get this to fit in here. And I want a large amount of styrofoam to fit in here. You know what I mean? I want it to... I think that'll be good. I just, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more off the side here. That'll do. That'll do. And then these little tiny pieces I have up front because we don't want to shove everything into just this one little spot. So I'm going to put this in here and then now it's basically more measuring. If you see here, I'm going to kind of, wrong side, get that pushed down pretty far in there. And we're going to use this the same. We're going to actually use a little bit thinner of wire to wire it in. Um, Hot glue won't work since this is fabric. It'll just stick, you know, the hot glue will go right through the fabric. So let me kind of place this down here, guys, and see how I can get it to fit for me. Okay. And also take a peek. So I got this guy in here, if you see there. But he's creating a little bit of a bump right here. So I'm going to just slice that tiny piece off right there. Just at the bottom. Perfect. See? All I did was I literally just cut that little tiny square off of it. And now that it's back in there, you don't see it anymore. Well, you got kind of a little bit right here. Maybe I'll cut a little bit more off. Let me see. Nope. 
Don't need to. I just didn't want it to be crazy, you know, sticking out to where it looks weird. I want it to be... I just want it to be cute and happy. Oh, jeez, this guy is way too big. Yep, we need to cut a lot of this guy off. Okay. don't think I need to wire this in but you know once you start to add flowers and you get it kind of the waist kind of turns around you don't want to get stuck with your piece falling apart on you and then having to try to find a way to secure it it gets it, it'll, it'll it'll actually ruin your day a little bit so I'm gonna definitely secure this all in after I get these glued together I'm just kind of cutting off some of these little pointy pieces right here before I try to get it smoothed in. There we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like. <laughs> this is how I got it to fit in there. And then there's the front. You see that? Nope. I'm not happy with that piece. Let's get that cut off right there. I hate how messy it gets. It's like, I know I'm a little bit of a, of a, neat, of a neat freak. And star cutting styrofoam with a knife is like uh, not my favorite thing to do. Okay, there I'm happy. The front is still smooth. You don't see any of those marks. And then I got all those goodies in there because we are going to fill this thing up. So give me five. So if you see, can you guys see all this stuff on my table right here? It's so messy. I know, and it's only just begun. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these all out right here. Uh, yeah, carry Hobby Lobby bags in the bottom, and then I put tissue paper on top of that. little white tissue paper. Let's see. An electric knife is an amazing tool for cutting star from if you have a place for it. They're cheap and work well. I have a, uh, a heated wire tool that I use, and I have to use it in my garage because star from stinks. Real bad. Um, but I have a, a heated wire tool that I use. Um, let me pull this out. If I can even get it out, it might not work for me. I don't think I can get this out, you guys. Okay. So I know that this slides this way. I'm not able to get this one out, so I'm going to leave it the way it is, and I'm going to wire it in from right here. You can see the, you guys can see the tissue paper in the bags back there and underneath, so I'm going to try and get it in like that. I like doing different things for your door. Everyone does wreaths. That's true, Brenda. It's what I thought I saw. Everything's a little bit different. Oh, okay. Brenda's doing a Facebook Live of the tobacco basket that I did before, but hers is white. Nice. That's nice. Share that. Let us know uh, when, when you're doing it. FYI, I have a styrofoam cutter I got from Amazon, about $12. Well worth the money. Styrofoam cutter. Okay. Yep. I got that wire tool and I'm probably just going to go buy a knife because the wire tool wasn't exactly, wasn't, it wasn't expensive and it works really well, but I'm probably just going to go get like a bread knife from the dollar store. Keep that cost down just a little bit. Should work out just great. Andrea, neighbor from Vegas. How you doing? And my sister's here, guys. Hi, Stacy. It takes longer, but we see that things don't go smoothly even for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. It, it won't exactly go smoothly for you if, you know, that's just, I think that's just life, right? That's just how things go. <laughs> I'm kind of taking a large amount of wire off of here. And I think now that I have these other two pieces out, I might be able to uh, wire this thing in. I want to get it super secure because I don't want it to fall apart. So 
So I'm taking this out and I'm just gonna kind of give myself some slack on this side. And I'm gonna kind of let the wire cut in. You're gonna let the wire cut into the styrofoam just a little bit. I'm gonna wrap it around probably twice. Maybe like this. Yeah, that's gonna work out a-okay for me. Let it cut in just a little bit. All you're doing is making sure that it has a good secure piece. You're not going to have to worry about it cutting straight through. I mean, this is a big chunk of styrofoam, you guys. You're not going to have to worry about it, like, really slicing through the entire piece. I mean, unless you're putting so much force on it, then you're just using too much force. Don't do that. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I've got the wire wrapped across it this way. i got a piece coming here, and i got a piece coming off here. I'm going to feed it around underneath the piece that we had already under here, if you guys can see. I'm going to feed it right up under here. And again, like I did with the hanger, it's a very, this is a very thin wire. So if you see here, I was able to pull it right through. It's not giving me an issue. It's actually being very cooperative. Let me get that guy pushed in there all the way down. this one I need it to go under another wire so I'm gonna speed it basically guys get creative that's all I'm really doing I mean there's no rhyme or reason I'm not exactly um I wouldn't say I'm professional at anything it's just you know the creative process how you can figure things out just get your your beautiful minds to work and then um, everybody does everything different but that's also why we're here you want to see someone else's take on it that's why you know certain Certain books and movies appeal to us and remakes of different things. It's just, I'm trying to get this wire to agree with me. So, I mean, once we get this in here, you guys, I can actually start on the arrangement. have it secure enough to where I'm I'm basic I'm very happy with it I'm gonna put some glue right on top of this piece in here where it's sitting on top of my door hanger so that I actually can secure the door hanger down just a little bit better and then the styrofoam is stuck to it as well so I just took my glue gun and kind of pushed that down there and then I'm gonna take this guy and just twist it around it's silver wire you're gonna be able to see a little bit of it from the back um, I'm not going to put any leaves on the back of this like I would um, a wreath to cover it up. Um, some of this stuff is just, you know, par for the course. It's something that you accept when you get a handmade piece. I mean, I mean I've mean, i tried my best to cover up most of the stuff if it's really kind of an eyesore. Like this silver wire probably won't show enough to bother most people. I'm a little bit of a neat freak, but I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in that aspect. <laughs> See, I'm gonna wrap it, Let's wrap it around like this, and twist it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And then I'll show you guys close up once I'm done. I'll get this twisted under in itself. One more, one more little twirl, guys, and I'll show you just how much of this is showing, and you'll see it's not it's not earth shattering by any means. It'll be um, 
it's okay. I mean, especially if I'm okay with it, then pretty much everybody else should be okay with it because I'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to that. That's basically the wire that you can see from the back. You see that? I mean, you have to get really close to the project and you also have to be looking at the back of it in order to see that. So that's basically how I got that to secure on. You got a little bit of wire here. Tiny bit of glue on the inside. Now these pieces I'm going to glue in. These pieces are... Yep, okay, I remember which side goes on which one. These pieces are going to get glued in as I push them in. They're not going to be... Not going to be a problem at all. So I'm basically going to stick just a bunch of hot glue on the back of it here. And then while it's still super hot and melting it, I'm going to go ahead and just push it right down in. Try not to burn myself. Just like that. And then hold it there. Make sure it doesn't come back up. Um, let's see. What are we what are we talking about on here, you guys? Uh, let's see. I need music on to get. That's perfect. That's perfect. Watching Windsor. Let's see. I found a lot of people's a lot of pages here. People want something for nothing. I'm not sure what we're talking about, guys. Hold on, real quick. Okay, time for first time watching. Thanks, Betty. Welcome. Welcome to my page. Love having you. Alright, I got them glued in and they're solid. I'm just going to hold them here a little bit. Uh, she's awesome. Thanks, you. Thanks, Irina. You're so nice. Finally able to watch a live from Calgary, Alberta. Thanks, Shanda. Welcome. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Andrea. You're so nice. Hello from Belton, South Carolina. Hi, Judy. Let's see. Watching from Windsor, Ontario. Enjoy your lives watching from Florida. Thanks, Sandy. Okay, hello, Joy. Need music on. Yeah, my sister's a big music person. I am too. I am too. Trust me. I love having music on no matter what I'm doing. Nancy, yes, I did get the uh, hobby, the um umbrella from Hobby Lobby. Um, let's see. Got on late. Will you post a replay? Jean, yes. Actually, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. It's going to be on my YouTube channel as well. So if you guys can go over to YouTube to watch the playbacks, perfect. Oh, let's see. It, must, it makes you sad to go to Hobby Lobby. You want to make lots of stuff. Well, you can wait till it gets on sale, girl. If it's a if it's a you know a budget issue, that stuff will go down really really cheap. And and you can always find something like to sell or to buy, sorry, when it's at, it's really, really cheap. Is these might be sold out, but there are other things. Their baskets are super cute. Lots of stuff at Hobby Lobby goes on sale. It's really good. Elizabeth, um, the umbrella is from Hobby Lobby. A oh, place to sell, and it's not going to cost you anything. You might want to test your market for pricing. See what people are in your area. I'm not sure who you're talking to, Brenda. Let's see. See what people in your area are selling their products for. She bought it at Hobby Lobby. Have a tried local sales. Okay, thanks. Most areas have local Facebook sale only pages where you post in the area the first time here. Thanks, Michelle. Welcome. Love your page. Made your made your carrots for my arrangement from California. Oh, perfect. That's good, Maria. So happy. Yeah, the carrots are super cute. And uh, Claire and Nicole picked him up and actually took him and uh, used him for her term. She went on um, TV in San Antonio and the carrots are on, on TV. So, sorry about autocorrect, Cassie. No problem. Can't wait to see end results. Okay. Main here. Okay, guys, let's keep crafting. Let's keep crafting. Okay. So, finally, got the styrofoam in. Got it stuffed at the bottom. Now we can start the best part, in my opinion, is adding flowers. I got these really super pretty hydrangea. They're sort of the same type of muted green that the front is, and they've got a little tiny bit of pink in them, but they're really super pretty. So I got these hydrangea, and I brought some little bit of bright lime green here with these guys. Now, again, I bought a lot of flowers, but I don't know if I'm going to be using them all for this project. So remember, all your leftovers make super cute little one arrangements. Here, I'll show you. Um, I had this rose left over from a different arrangement. You see here, and I got this little tiny box. 
And it's just the one super rose. Isn't that cute? With a little bit in it. Um, I made those a couple days ago. I have a, a marigold here like this. Aren't those super cute? Just added a lot of little stuff in a little box. Florals is where I love. I mean, you guys, I don't. I can't express to you how much I love flowers. I mean, I got my. Ta I have a tattoo on my arm with all flowers. I have this obsession, and that's why I tend to buy a little bit too many. But it's also because I bought this stuff for this project about two weeks ago, um, and then I had a back injury. I'm still kind of recovering from that, and some other issues had come up, but. Um, I wanted to make sure that if I bought all the stuff for the project, but I didn't get to the project right on time, that I wouldn't run out. The biggest issue is that if, if I come across something I'm like, oh, well, dang, I wish I'd got two of those flowers, then you try to go back and then they're all sold out. So the biggest issue is like, sometimes it's okay to buy an extra one or two flowers. If you have to go ahead and return it. But in my, in my case, I keep them and I use them for many other projects. So this would be one of the things where I've got some bright white tulips, or sorry, these are really pretty roses. And I actually like how the edges of them are kind of like a little bit papery. They're really pretty. And then I bought a few of these guys. They're like a little bit of a cream color. Because I'm mixing in a lot of muted tones with a little bit of lime, bright lime green. And it's going to pull more of the spring into it. And you guys know I love, you always got to put ficus in there. It's a really good filler. It's a very inexpensive filler. For the back i've got this really fuzzy i mean this is almost kind of like velveteen looking um eucalyptus this is a really pretty look all of these all of the flowers came from michael's except these these i got at hobby lobby but i bought them in such a huge bulk order that you can get ficus leaves at michael's also if you need to but if you find one flower basically this flower inspired all of this i found this flower and i loved it and i wanted to do something with it so the rest of it all came together with these flowers in mind and i knew i'd already had this at home but i didn't know exactly what i wanted to put in it yet so that's part of it oh and i got these cute little guys here too they're a little they're like hard little plastic aren't they cute i couldn't help it i thought these would be super cute just around the front so I'm going to just get started and, and start putting in the, the filler, which I like to put these, you know, I like to put the filler in towards the back to get things kind of uh, moved all around. Hydrangea, South Carolina. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Also excited to see you live for the first time. Thanks, Pat. I know, um, Pat, you normally catch my YouTube videos, I think. Thank you so much for supporting me on YouTube. That really helps out so I can continue making these videos for you guys. I know in my last video, if you guys have seen it, I haven't talked to anybody on Facebook yet, but I'm going to be doing a Patreon account. Um, Patreon basically is supporting artists and the ability to, in the ability of donations. You know, depending on the donation that you make for me, I can do special classes. It's going to be sort of like if you're familiar with paid groups on Facebook. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do one on Facebook, but Patreon is about the same thing. And basically, there will be other benefits, whereas we could do an actual live video or conference together. Stuff like that, depending on the donations. That's in the works. My husband's helping me work that out. But um, everybody knows there's a cost associated with all this. Um, I just bought, before I resigned from my job, I bought a pretty good, um, pretty expensive uh, set of software equipment to do editing for my videos for you guys. Add stuff in, stuff like that. And uh, the videos on YouTube are going to get a lot uh, a lot more detailed, and there's going to be more of them. I'm going to be doing more YouTube videos than Facebook Lives. But you guys will always have the option to, to always get in touch with me. It's never going to be a problem. White flowers are lily of the valley. Aren't they? Yes, they're so cute. Aren't they cute? Love the roses. Excited to get to see you live for the first time. Perfect. Um, yes, I haven't. I have been following you on YouTube. Yes, Pat. I know. Thank you. You're one of my regulars. I see you, your comments all the time. I love seeing that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You can pin your YouTube link. Yep, I probably could, girl, but I'm not going to pick up my tablet and try to type in there just yet. I, I'm, I'm just not. I, I probably more than likely could. Perfect, perfect. Me too, me too, Patricia, perfect. 
Uh, Pat, yes, I'm going to be starting a group, but it's going to be more on Patreon. I'm I'm not exactly a fan of the Facebook group stuff, but we'll see how it goes. I haven't I haven't learned too much about it just yet to actually form an opinion, but I also think Facebook is super saturated with a lot of other groups. So right now, you guys, I'm just literally pushing these into the back. Sometimes this won't show, all right? Do not worry about it not showing. The, your, the purpose of this is filler. You want this to take in places and fill in spots where greenery, so you don't see the, um, it's basically so you don't see the styrofoam sticking out. And um, it's, it should never be like, you know, don't be worried about it if you can, if you've basically covered up most of it. You know, I always say, like, you don't approach a project head-on. Anytime you have it in your home, anytime you hang a wreath on a wall or a door, you never just walk straight at the wreath. You you know, everybody sees things at different angles. Everybody's, a, you know, different people are at different heights. You got super tall people, super short people. Everybody sees things differently. So I like to approach my arrangements at all angles. So if you're looking at something straight on, you're thinking, I just put like eight or nine picks of um, ficus leaves in there and I'm not going to see it. It will. It makes a difference. And if anything, it covers up some of the stuff you don't want to be seen. I don't like to use moss only because it's really, really messy, like super messy. Even after you're done with your project, it sheds everywhere. Um, some people have said it you know, it attracts mice. I don't know. I don't live in an area where there's a lot of mice, but some people have had that as a concern. They're not exactly fond of moss. Um, like, you know, the bagged moss. You can buy bagged artificial or peat moss and then put that over styrofoam. I would prefer to just make the arrangement big and beautiful enough to cover any of the stuff you don't really want to see. That's basically how I approach most of it. So I'm cutting up more of this ficus branch. You probably use the equivalent of about just one branch really is really all I'm kind of going to do. I want you to be able to make a living and still share the talents with this. Yeah, the, my main issue is I still want to be able to just share all this stuff with you guys. But obviously, you know, buying supplies and um, mainly it's the software, the lighting, the cameras. And, you know, those are usually one-time purchases, but they're really big one-time purchases. And then also, you guys know, I'm still doing my, uh, I can't back out now. I already bought it all. The Wreath Makers Live in June. That's about a $1,200 trip for me with, uh. Ticket, airfare, hotel, and then super shuttle to the hotel and back so I don't have to get a rental car. It's up there. But I still want to be able to share all my good stuff, good ideas, and projects with you. It's basically the same stuff that I wanted when I was first starting out, and it just didn't exist. Also, YouTube wasn't around when I first started out. I've been doing this for a little bit. And YouTube was not here. So there you go, guys. This is just, it's just a starter. It's just a filler. If you, if we need more, I'll add more as we go. But then I'm basically going to put in the two hydrangea I want because these are my focus flowers. These are my main event. I always, you know, remember I say pick a flower and you fall in love with it and then build your arrangement around it. These two guys were my, um, they were my little diamonds. I just saw them on the aisle and I was like, those are gorgeous and I want them. Hydrangea is also my favorite flower. I like to say I don't have a favorite because all flowers are just, I mean, I just, I love all flowers. I can't say I have, like, I hate any one flower, but hydrangea is like my favorite. I just absolutely love them. I find myself buying a lot of them in my own home decor, <laughs> no matter what. I get them at Christmas. I put them in my Christmas decor. I put them in my spring decor. I have them all over my house, you guys, all different colors. And I just realized, I guess maybe, maybe hydrangea are my favorite. So I'm going to cut them probably, remember always cut them a little bit longer than you think you need them because just like with most, thing, most things you can always add, I mean you can always take away but you can't really add more once you cut it, kind of like bangs, 
with your hair. When you cut your bangs, cut them longer than you need them, guys. I'm sure lots of you have had that same story that I have. When I used to have bangs, cut them longer than you think you need them because you can't add back on. <laughs> you can't glue your, your hair back on your face. I've been there. I've wanted to before. These have a really thick stem on them too, you guys. Pretty thick. So I'm kind of putting a little bit of a bend in the top one, in, the, in this one. I'm putting a little bit of bend towards the top. Just right here with my hand, just putting a little bit of a bend in it. So I can get it to face forward instead of straight up and down. I want it to face forward a little bit. And this is actually really good. This is a very well-made flower. You know, you can tell a lot by the flowers if they fall apart when you're, you're just messing with them. And this guy's pretty solid. If you see how thick and fluffy this is, I want to say they weren't exactly cheap, but they weren't. Let's see. Yeah, these weren't cheap. These were $12.99 each. I got them for 40% off, but I mean $12.99 for one flower. You, you know what I'm saying? You get what you pay for. $12.99, this thing better not fall apart. But I got it 40% off, I believe. I may even, you know what? I think I may have gotten it 50% off because I think all their spring stems were 50 can't remember. I know I did not pay $12.99 because I refused to spend that much on one flower, but these are the better, it's the better quality flower. I'd have to look at my receipt, but I'm fairly certain I got them for 50% off. I know for sure I did not buy them for full price. If you guys already know me by now, you'll know I did not pay full price for that. <laughs> so I'm going to pick a side and kind of leave this in and I want maybe this to be my highest piece so you, even if the arrangement comes up you can still see the curve of the handle up here so that's about as far in as I'm going to go with this one and I'm going to use a lot of the other little flowers I bought as um, you know the filler to cover up the styrofoam and to cover up the stuff we don't want anyone to see so it's going to be pretty full arrangement and I think this guy right here I might put closer to the front, but I'm going to put it in a lot lower, so I'm going to cut more of this stem off because I don't want to have to really push hard on this uh, styrofoam that's in here. And this has these, these little weird guys on it, so what I do is I take my clippers off on sideways and I clip all that stuff off. If it starts to give you a problem, just start clipping at the plastic, and you can get the plastic pretty much you can get it pretty clean to the point where it's not, it won't be too big of an issue. Um, let's see. Love you and your talent. Thanks, Andrea. So nice. Oh, you're welcome, Ava. That's my pleasure. It's what I'm here for. Uh, love the camera angle. Love the chit chat. Love everything about her channel. Thank you, Chandra. Oh, that's so nice. That's what they told us in beauty school. Perfect. Yeah, I remember. Especially, you can't glue your hair back on. Trust me. I've been there. You cut them too short when your hair... Yeah, no. Lots of horror stories from uh, cutting my own hair. No, not a good idea. By any means, not at all. This guy I'm going to put closer to the front so it kind of goes in between those two. And then I'll try to leave those... Yeah. I'm liking it. Usually half the time I don't really have a plan for the arrangement. I just kind of place things and if they start to look pretty, I glue them in. And remember, if you ever put something in a spot and you don't like it, take it back out because you haven't glued it in. So I, I don't, I try not to just glue things in. You know, I test it out first and then I'll glue it. And there are times where I'll just take stuff. You see how this is kind of already filling up pretty well. Um, then there's, there's times where I will just take stuff and push it in because I'm very confident that where it's going is going to look amazing. And then also, you guys, I took these off of the hydrangea stem. These are the leftover leaves that didn't stay on it. I can put these in the pick machine if I need to, and they can also be more filler to come up around the sides. I'm saving them towards the end. Normally, you guys know, I put that stuff in the back of my wreaths to cover up the wires and, you know, the, the mechanics in the backs. I like to call it the behind the scenes, the stuff nobody really wants to look at too much. These little guys here, yeah. I didn't write my prices down on these guys, but I got I got the flowers at Michael's for 50% off. I don't ever buy flowers at full price unless it's some sort of emergency. Like I have a custom order. I've only had to do that a couple times. If it's a custom order and I didn't buy enough and I have to go run out and hopefully they have it. 
especially if it's Hobby Lobby and it happens to be the week on Hobby Lobby where none of their stuff is 50% off and I just, I just don't have a choice. That's part of the, part of the risk you take. And if anyone else has been able to figure it out, please let me know how to avoid that. Because a lot of times that's not the easiest thing to do. That's why I normally think that I buy more than I absolutely need just because like if I buy it in excess then I know I'll have enough for the project but it's not always the case. Because even these uh, these lime green guys here, these were, um, I just took the tag off. I believe they said $5.99. Oh no, $4.99. They were $4.99 so I got them for $2.50 for the two. It's not too bad. And you got the size. It's a pretty decent sized flower and it's a really beautiful color. So I'm just testing these out in a couple different places. Put two over here on this side and put two over here on this side. And also, I'm pushing down on it. I'm going down into the, instead of down this way. Because remember, there's, I don't want to put too much pressure on the arrangement or on the styrofoam behind it. Because that can cause bigger issues in other areas. So, again, I'm just kind of, oh, see that leaf fell off. That's fine. I'm just kind of testing things out. All I'm doing is kind of, also, um, I like to kind of sort, you can sort of make it even. I like to say I don't really follow any kind of pattern or any kind of rules, but if there's any kind of, um, if there's any kind of process that you already use or that you already take and you know, you, you just stay consistent in your own style. If you have a specific style, stay consistent and then you'll always be original. Don't worry about what other people are doing or what other people are saying about your projects. Just Stay consistent with your own preferences and you'll always be original. You always have nothing to really worry about. It's usually what they'll say. If you're going to do something a certain way, stay consistent with it and then you've got nothing to worry about. You should never have any issues. Um, or concerns or, you know, worried about, you know, some of the issues that pop up around in the, in the, I guess, what we, is it, would you call, what would you guys, what would you guys call this? Are we a wreathing community? Yeah, see here, I wrote this one down. So from $4.99, I paid $2.39 for this beautiful guy right here. So remember, sometimes your arrangements aren't going to be cheap, but um, a lot of times, a lot, well, I mean, a lot, my husband likes to say it too, especially with electronics, you get what you pay for. My husband is a software engineer and he is a huge computer nerd. So I have that benefit. I've got him on my side when it comes to electronics and and websites and TVs and all that. We're working on a website, by the way, guys. That's really exciting. I bought a domain and I got a host and I'm working on building. My husband's helping me build a website. So you guys, I'm going to, I'm working, I'm going to put a calendar up. I think my website mainly will be a, a bigger, a bigger forum for a, a calendar for me to basically give you guys more of a permanent schedule. Um, the messenger bot's kind of new, but it takes over my entire messenger for me, so it's a little hard. It's a little hard to kind of respond to messages or to even know that I have them sometimes. So I'm a little concerned about messenger bot, but it's so brand new. I mean, you guys, all of you guys had said that you got your messages, which is very positive because I know. That's kind of frustrating. I've, I've wanted to watch other pages myself, and then when they're going live, I don't know they're live because Facebook didn't notify me, even though I have it down as, you know, wanting notifications for that channel. So, um, it seems to be a good outlet. A lot of other people are using it for their pages, and a lot of people are liking it, so I may just keep it, but I still want to be able to, to answer your questions and, and your messages, you know what I mean? I want to be able to get, to stay in contact with you guys. So I'll have to see if I want to keep it because it really does just kind of take over. Unless some of you guys, uh, anyone else has experience with it, so we can talk. I don't really have too much experience with Messenger. Uh, it's a Messenger bot. It's called Manny Chat. 
my other business people, if you guys are watching, let me know, let me know how you deal with it, because it's brand new to me. So there's the two roses. Those guys are kind of more focal, focal, you know. Put your bigger pieces in first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to accent with this, but I'll show you guys how I'm going to cut it apart. I'm not going to, I mean, this is way too long. Do you see how long these are? We're going to cut them apart, and with the eucalyptus and I believe you said lily of the valley, these are gorgeous. With those two, we're going to fill in a lot of the empty spaces. Oh, I don't know if I showed you guys. Look how these little, these like little rosebuds, I don't know what this is. If you guys know what flower this is, I just love this. Do you see how it kind of, it's airy, it has cute, move. I like the movement in it. But they're just like little tiny, they look like almost like tea roses to me. Or they could be mums. I, you know, I don't know what, the, peonies. I, I'm, I'm shouting out like flower names with excitement because I don't know what they are, but they're super cute. Super cute. Love the colors. Oh no. Sorry, Kathy, is somebody having an issue? Sorry guys if there's an issue. I'm going to try to find a moderator if you guys are having an issue, someone's being rude. Just try to ignore it. I mean, everybody has bad days. You know what I mean? I don't I don't see anything yet, but sorry Kathy if someone's someone's being mean. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if I can get my husband to moderate sometimes and then um if someone's just being real snotty or nasty, we'll 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 try to find a way to to fix that, but hopefully it won't hopefully it won't last. Let's just let's just Focus on the flowers. Look how beautiful they are. And if you don't like them, then you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> this is all about flowers, guys. This is all about flowers. Peonies. Okay, good, Brenda. Yeah, peonies. Could be peonies or ranunculus. I thought this was a ranunculus. Am I wrong? I don't. You know what? I don't care. Because you know what? It's pretty and I like it. That's usually how I look at it. Oh, it's pretty and I like it. Now, see, guys, I'm going to cut these apart, so I am going to have to use my pick machine. I didn't know if I would or not. So, yeah, I'm going to have to use my pick machine because I can't place this in here this way. It's going to be way too... You know what? I can do whatever I want, right? So let's test it out, guys. Let's just see what it looks like. Star Putting a hole in styrofoam is not the end of the world. I'm going to test putting it in just like this. What do you think? So here's what we got so far, and maybe we need a little bit of something coming off to the side. Let's just see. I have another one, and I can rip this one apart if I need to. So let's just see how it works. I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. So this is where I was talking about it might be a little um, weighted differently because I might have something a little bit a little bit heavier. So let me go ahead and try this guy out right here. I'm just going to try to hold the styrofoam. While I push this in here like this. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Eh? Meh? Maybe? Yes? No? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me hold the holder. This is how we're going to hang it on the wall. I kind of like it. I think this one gets a little bit too hidden, so I can cut that one off. I like it. It's a little quirky. And love the peonies. Be be thankful you don't have to pay. Uh oh. Uh oh. You guys, is it getting out of control, guys? Because I can just end the stream and we'll figure it out, and then I can come back. Is it bad? Many chat is good. I receive. Oop. What does this say? Many chat is good. I receive notifications like others. I like that I am notified. If I can't watch live, I can go back and watch the replay. Okay, Marcia. So you like you like getting notified. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, how do you comment or see comments on YouTube? Roxy, on YouTube, you have to have a Google account. So if you have an Android phone, you already have a Google account. If you have an iPhone, you'll have to get a Google account, which means signing up for a Gmail. And basically, you don't really need to use it like an email, but you would need, in order to leave comments on my YouTube channel, you'll need a Gmail account to um, leave any kind of comments. You can watch it. You don't have to have an account with YouTube. You can watch for free. Uh, but in order to leave uh, likes and subscribe notifications, uh, I have a discussions tab on my YouTube channel that I'm going to be putting a lot more stuff in to keep track with those guys because there are people who just use Facebook and there are people who just use YouTube. So I want to be able to include all of you. Uh, too tall? Let's see. Too tall, huh? A little more greenery. Oh, yeah, Stacy, I'm not my sister. I'm not done, girl. I'm not done. I got lots more to add to it. 
Being notified is great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Go for it. The movement might be fun. The flowers are pretty. You might as well take advantage of letting them move. Yeah, I like the movement. We'll see. I'm going to take... I'm not going to glue it in because, yeah, Connie and, and Inya, yeah, it seems it might be too high on the one side. So I'm only going to... I'm going to leave it here, but I'm not going to glue it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these guys here. These are little pretty girls. And then... Um, I'll take the other one and I'll kind of, uh, I'll kind of, um, clip them apart and probably use my, um, well, not probably, I will be using my, um, stimming machine, my steel picks machine, which, um, if you don't have one, you can always use those floral pick, uh, the wooden picks. And then I find that the, the wire that comes on those floral picks isn't strong enough. So what I do is I use floral tape. That's what I do, uh, sorry, that's what I used to do before I got the pick machine. If I couldn't get it to work very well, I'd use uh, the, the pick, the wooden pick with, a, with floral tape. Because a lot of times it was just causing a lot of, a lot of problems if the, if the stem was just too weak, it couldn't handle it. So let me just kind of place these guys in here. I'm going to put this one really, you guys, I'm going to cut this one super short right here. I'm going to cut it super short right here. I'm going to use it right here because there's a decent amount over here of the um, styrofoam that's showing. So I'm going to show you after I glue it in. I want it to be covered up. And we're going to cover up the rest of that. So you got a little cute little guy coming down here. And these are a lighter cream colored. They're not exactly, they're definitely not white. And um, I think that, that they lend a little bit more... The middle of these roses have a little bit of a cream color to them, and then also there's some cream inside the hydrangea, so it's kind of pulling, just pulling the colors out of a lot of it to kind of get it to, to get it to kind of all, not necessarily match, it doesn't have to match, it's just, um, it complements, there we go, that's a good way of saying it. I like the way they, they, they complement each other, if you know what I mean. I mean, I hold the bottom of this here because I'm holding it while I'm pressing in. I just don't want to put a ton of pressure on um, on the styrofoam. I just want to make sure that I got a really good seal uh, as far as the glue to the stem. It'll hold it in. It'll be fine. It won't be top heavy. It'll all work out okay, guys. It'll work out okay. Those roses are working out a little bit better than I thought they would. They're super pretty. And I always say I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be using all of the flowers. I have a feeling I might use all of these flowers, guys. There we go. Got glue on my ring. There we go. It just comes right off. I have one more of these. I might put one in the back. Let me just take a peek here, guys. Yeah, I think this might be a little bit too much back here. I agree with you guys. I'm going to take it out. I agree, I agree. Let's just rip it apart and um, we'll put a steel pick on it. So I'll pull my steel pick machine out here, you guys, so you all, so you guys can all see it. I'm going to leave them a little bit longer so that they kind of stick out, but they're going to, it, it'll stick out a little bit more, more evenly across the whole, the whole arrangement. So let me pick up this big guy right here. That's my best Christmas present I ever got from my husband. Well, my husband's got me a lot of good presents, but I love this machine with a passion. I want to thank the creator of this machine or whoever it came, what, in any event, I just love this machine, you guys. I absolutely loved it. Uh, no, I never doubted if you picked roses that they would work and be beautiful, too. I like to mix stuff together, guys. Like, I don't have any floral training. Sometimes you just, what you want to go and you think is pretty, then go with it. You know what I mean? Real gardenias smell delicious. Oh, I bet they do. Uh, Sherry, the umbrella was originally $29.99, and then at Hobby Lobby, I got it. I believe their fall. I'm sorry. Sorry, why fall? Fall's my favorite time of year, but um, 
I believe I got it for 40% off um, their Easter stuff. So I got it for $17.99. There we go. So all I did was add that to the end. You guys are steel pick machines. Advances steel pick. This is for people who aren't familiar with it, guys. I know if you got a steel pick machine, you're like me, you love it. So you place your stem in the bottom of it, and then you press this back, and you kind of push it down on this handle, and it secures a steel pick around the end of it. Because these guys are super, super bendy, and the um, the hot glue is just going to melt it, and then it won't be strong enough to push it into the styrofoam. Uh, previous to this, I just used floral uh, floral picks, which were the wooden the wooden sticks with a little tiny wire on it. But then I had to use floral tape because it took a little bit longer. But this is just super super convenient and just makes me very happy. I love them. So I'm gonna place these guys in sporadically, and we'll see how uh, we'll see how we like them. That looks great there. I'm just dipping everything in. If you see over here off to the right or your left, whichever way Facebook has it twisted, into my um, glue skillet. Um, and a lot of you guys gave some really good tips and ideas on one of my other videos about getting these glue skillets um, from camping websites, off of camping sites, because they make the little six or seven inch skillets. Um, it does not have to be for glue. Basically, I know a lot of people that use the larger kitchen size ones for their crafts and it's just the size it's just perfect it's, it does the exact same thing just don't ever put food in it you know <laughs> don't ever put food in it if you had glue in it but um you know with anything it takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, education a little bit of responsibility and everything will be fine I just don't have the space so Whenever this little guy right here gives out on me, I'll probably be looking for something to replace it off of a different type of website or one of those things. Yeah, look at the movement. Isn't that cute? Oh, geez. I love that. Look, <laughs> I know when you hang this on a wall or when you hang it on your door, it's not going to do this. But there's something about the way they move that just makes me happy. Isn't that stinking cute? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm not going to leave it together. Would you do all different colors? Oh, Sherry, maybe I missed something. I love this steel pick machine, but have torn the heck out of my hands with those little bayonets. <laughs> Del, that's a cute way of explaining them. Yeah, they are bayonets. I haven't cut myself yet. Um, one of them I had an issue with. I've returned like three of these um, to get one that finally is from the factory and nice, but I haven't cut myself. Okay, I love the pick machine saves so many florals. Yes, I agree. Hi, Olive, Thanks for joining. Kai, thank you so much, Whitney. You're so talented. You're so nice. Uh, my husband keeps saying that's enough flowers when I'm making something. I just keep adding more. Perfect, Lita. That's what I say. Then again, my husband is colorblind. So half the time he can't see half of the stuff I've put in there. That's funny. That's funny. Much better. Yes. Thank you, Patty. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Ing, my sister said, you realize everyone wants one. Me, mom. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that, Stacy. <laughs> good luck with that, Stacy. Too big for the door with the screen. Oh yeah, if you have a door that, like a storm door or screen door, yeah, this isn't gonna fit. But it would look really pretty on the back of your door, inside your, like your front area. I have a wreath on the front and the back of my front door. I have one for outside, and then I have one for inside, so every time I walk past it, I get something to look at to make me happy. Let's see, very cute, absolutely adorable. Perfect, perfect! love how you refer to things makes making you feel happy. I mean, that's what it's about, right, Christine? That's perfect. I'm like, I'm glad you like to hear that. And thank you for sharing, Jeanette. Thank you. And that's what half of this stuff is about, right, guys? These we a lot of people you do these things as an outlet. You do these things to make you feel better. Um, they you know relieve stress. It it does a lot of good stuff for a lot of people. Whatever your outlet is, whether it's painting, or cooking, or crocheting, or woodworking, or you know cake decorating, whatever you do that makes you happy, it's a form of stress, uh, stress relief, right? When I get these things, <laughs> they just, you know, when it, something just makes you smile, that's like the best, that's when you know you're doing something right. I mean, it just, that's, all, that's the only way I can explain it, is like it just makes me happy. 
I get like, like giddy, like a little kid. I start giggling at stuff. It's weird. I know. And I'm glad you guys love to see that because that was some of the stuff I was like, well, maybe people are going to think I'm a little weird because I laugh and I giggle a lot when I get the arrangements half done. I start to get excited about it. <laughs> but I know a lot of you guys are very supportive. A lot of you guys, I feel like I'm here with friends. That's what, that's like the best part is like, I feel like I have so many friends that I would have never had had I not decided to just bite the bullet and go live and say, look, I'm a little weird, I'm a little quirky, but I know I'm not the only one out there. Everybody's like that. Don't think you're alone, guys, because we're all a little odd, right? <laughs> all right, so there's a little bayonet she was talking about. <laughs> they are sharp, guys. Be careful with them. They are sharp. They will, they will bite. They do not play nicely. Um, I think I'm going to save this to see if I need these two. I'm going to save these two off till the end. Because I think once I put the eucalyptus in there, you guys will see that it's going to cover a lot of ground. And we may not have to use them. And it actually will save a little bit on the price. Oh, you know, the end price. These are also good to keep, too. See these little pieces you cut off? You could put a steel pick on this and then put this in to change it. I'm probably not going to put a bow in here, guys. I don't know that I don't. I just feel like it doesn't need ribbon. I think the flowers, I want them to shine on their own. So... Normally, that's also stuff I would save this and I would put this in my bows. If you guys have seen some of my other videos, a lot of you guys have been with me for a minute. You know, I love to add stuff to my bows. Those are great items to add to bows. Yes. Oh, Jesus is so cute. Um, for filler, I like the bows to look like they kind of grew, even though unrealistic. I like the, I like the bows to look like they kind of grew alongside the arrangement that you know it's something that's been there it's had time it, it's it's moved and cultivated with it you know whatever insert big words here whatever you know whatever the story is behind it it's kind of like watching a soap opera there's a story behind everything it might be unrealistic who knows it's a soap opera whatever <laughs> I'm adding these to the front now because I like the way they kind of come forward. I have one more I'm going to save because right now, you guys, we're going to start cutting this apart. So here, I'll show you. That's just what I did. I added a couple here coming down. I really like these poking out here. We're going to add some eucalyptus in here and towards the back. I got a little bit of a gap right here I need to fill. So the eucalyptus is really going to help out. Plus, it'll it'll become sort of its own focal point. It won't be, um, you know, too much of a crazy by itself kind of flower. But you can use it that way if, if you need. Or if, uh, you know, the situation warrants it. And actually, this situation does. We need it. So I'm just cutting them off of the stem. Each little stem on this bundle has three pieces on it. And what I'm going to do is cut them, I cut three off of each, so I've got six pieces, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut these pieces kind of down here, and I'm going to turn each one into two. So you see here, we've got this long piece, right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and I'm going to cut it right above where, this, where these petals are at. So now I've got, if you see here, it naturally will come up. You can bend it. There's wire in here, right? So now I've turned the top piece into its own pick because we left this piece of the stem longer, right? So now this piece is its own pick, and now this piece will be its own pick. That's a little bit short on this end, but um, I'll probably put a steel pick on. Let me see if I can move this up. Mm, the petals will move, but they're not exactly easy. It's a little difficult. There we go. I can push it up a little bit on itself. And this would be more or less to cover up some of the styrofoam I don't want showing in the front. So I'm going to place this in the front here. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this is longer. It's got more length. I'll show you where I'll put this. But this guy, I'm going to place right up front. So I'm going to put my steel pick on it. And I'll show you guys. See right here in the very front, we got some styrofoam showing through. I don't know. Nobody wants to see that. That's not pretty, right? So what I'm going to do... Because I'm going to make the, the, 
like the pilot hole, you could say. And I don't want to cover up this rose because this rose here is important to our to our piece. I'm going to show you exactly how far down we're going to place this guy. I'm going to kind of bend it a little bit to the left down. And add just a little bit of greenery here to the front. And we can use that to like softly kind of line the bottom of the project. And then when you put these in towards the middle and the sides, let me see if I even need a steel pick for this one because this one's got a really long end on it. No, I don't need a steel pick on the end of this one. It's strong enough to put a hole in the styrofoam. You don't need a steel pick, which also means it'll be strong enough to not uh, melt with the hot glue usually. So there's that guy there. So I'm adding just a little bit of interest kind of poking through here and here. And then we're going to sprinkle it, we're going to sprinkle it throughout. And then we'll use the Lily of the Valley as uh, more accent. So it'll, it'll uh, lend more, um, Lend more pretty. It'll, that's my professional word, guys. It'll lend more pretty to the project. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where are you at here? Um, would you ever add one splash of color, or would that not look good? Jean, Jean, yes. I have done that many times. I have taken a project that I've just wanted to kind of get wild with. Just if I say get wild with it. And, like... If you're doing something that's kind of like, for example, my I did a fall wreath last year with turquoise pumpkins. I added orange, um, I think they were aspen leaves, but the whole thing was very a very muted orange or a very muted turquoise, um, lots of turquoise and cream, I believe. I'd have to look at it. I don't have the wreath in here. Um, lots of turquoise and cream, and then I had these aspen type leaves, and I added that bright green, that bright orange all the way around it. And it really made the wreath come alive. It really helped. Um, it really helped fill in when you didn't really think it'd be something that was kind of crazy. All I say is like, if you have like, if you get like what my mom used to say about the cats, if you get a wild hair, you know, if you get a wild hair, try it. Don't glue it in. If you don't like it, you can pull it out because you haven't glued it in. You know what I'm saying? If, if something is like, you know, I think some crazy color. I would love to put orange with, with purple or red with purple. You know, those the Red Hat Society has the red and purple. That stuff to me looks super pretty together. Add some of that together and see if you like it in an arrangement. I mean, anything will look good in a basket, in my opinion. You can't go wrong with baskets. And I've gotten many baskets at uh, Goodwill, the dollar store, you name it. Baskets are everywhere. I'm just filling in, guys, filling in a lot of empty spots and seeing where I just want to put more, more eucalyptus. Let me see if I want to leave this as tall as it is back here. It's a little difficult to work on just because of the shape of this guy. I have to keep kind of holding it like it's a baby. But that's okay. Testing out things. This is what we got so far, guys. It's looking super cute. I love the way these things move. They're so cute. Oy. Cuteness aggression, guys. It's real. Usually happens with puppies and kittens, but it happens also with floral arrangements, apparently. Because I'm getting a little bit crazy about this. Yeah, two of them. So annoying. Let's see. 
Oh, I did have a troll? Uh-oh. You know, I'll have to go back and, and I'll go back and I'll read the comments and find out if, you know, if they were super offensive to you guys. I'll, I'll just ban them. Everybody knows, I'm, I haven't had any bad issues because all you guys are so so nice and supportive and everything and you guys usually really get along together. I didn't see the comments, but if they're super rude, offensive, or they're like being mean to you guys or me, I'll go through and I'll find them and I'll block them or I'll have my husband do it. We'll figure it out, guys. So sorry. Luann, saw Clara, she's crafty, do your homemade carrot on a local TV show. She had a copy of it live on her page. Yeah, I saw that. She um, she messaged me when she was going to do her carrots because she saw my YouTube my YouTube video. So I watched her live do the carrots and it was really, really super cute. She added a lot of different stuff to it um, that I, I thought was really super cute. Especially for uh, Texas and... Uh, fiesta time in Texas, I guess it's a it's a big it's a big it's a big thing in Texas is fiesta. Just I guess like Mardi Gras is in Louisiana and places. I, I'm I'm a West Coaster, guys. I've I've lived a sheltered life. We don't do anything special out here. <laughs> it's really boring in Las Vegas. It's just you know wake up, do your do your life, do your thing, and then you know everyone expects you to go to the casinos. I don't. You can only go to so many buffets before you're like, really? Pass. You know what I mean? It's just better to go to restaurants, make your own stuff at home. Half the time it tastes better. If anybody else has lived in Vegas or lives in Vegas now and you know, it ain't that special. It's like, sure, visit if you want, visit us. But again, I live here. I was born and raised here. It's lost all its sparkle for me. I never really understood gambling anyways. I always, I always looked at it like I just put $30 in a machine. Do you know how many flowers I could have bought at Michael's with $30? And I just put that in a, in a slot machine. Okay, I need to win this back so that I can go to Michael's and buy $30 worth of flowers. <laughs> I just, I just, I've done that so many times. I'm like, eh, sure, whatever. Eh, eh. You know, I'm decorating the back of it like it's, yeah, I need to stop doing that. I just almost put some eucalyptus on the back of this arrangement. I almost put eucalyptus right here. You would not have been able to see it. Now, see, I'm going to cover a lot of this up here with more greenery so you don't actually have to see this. But this is some of the stuff that's not important to the actual um, arrangement. But if it's super important to you, then we're going to cover it up. For me, I don't like it showing at all. This is going to be for sale on my Etsy page. So I don't want you to purchase something that's going to have all this star foam showing. So I'm going to be putting a lot more greenery facing the opposite way back here. Um, and the best way to do that is with the ficus. It's super inexpensive. It's 99 cents a stem and I can probably fill it up with one stem. I don't know if I'm going to do that here. If you guys actually want to see me do that, that's kind of boring. But ask, tell, tell me what you want and that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you guys. That's what it's all about. You guys make it super fun. Oh, Nancy, uh, moss. I just said about moss earlier. I don't like moss. It's really messy. Some people in other areas, I mean, in Vegas, we don't really have mice, but some people say moss attracts mice. I don't know. Kyle, I agree. I like my money. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> home, I'll, home, I'll enjoy watching you. It just gets prettier. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Martha. You're so nice. What's the YouTube site that we can see the carrots on? Oh, it's basically Roxanne. It's my YouTube channel and it's crafty thoughts and whatnots. It's the same as my Facebook page name and my business name, Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, on YouTube. You can also get to it. There's a link on my Facebook page under website. If you go to the About section on my Facebook page, you'll see it under website. It's my YouTube channel. Um, I know someone earlier had said that I can pin it, but I'm using my phone here to film with you guys. I have my tablet here, but I don't know if I can even... I don't know if I can do that. Oh, thank you, Darlene. That was nice. Thank you so much. She put the, she put the name in there. Um, there's no ampersand though. It's actually spelled out A and D. Crafty thoughts and whatnots. YouTube channel and see her carrots. They are amazing. Yeah, it's a super, super detailed video. You'll see really close up how to do those carrots. 
I did just the carrots and then I did a separate video on um, my Easter wreath using the carrots. You guys are so great. Thanks for sharing that, Darlene. That was nice. Got this guy here. Let's take a peek here and see. I'm kind of close to losing this guy here. See this? Trying to be careful. And I might... I might end up doing what I said I didn't want to do, but it's just, it's too pretty. I mean, you get a hint, you can see a hint of the, I don't want to go any taller than that because you can, this rose right here, eh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not making that rose smaller. I love the way it looks and I don't want to take, I don't want to take any more flowers out of it. So I'm leaving it just the way it is like that. I do have a little space here I still need to fill. I just don't know which flower I want to fill it with. I use this lime green one yeah I'll probably use this bigger lime green one right here Oy. I don't want to use both of them because I don't want it to fill I don't want to fill it up too much I still have the lily of the valley and then that's it guys this has been super super fun super cute let me see if I can pull this off what I'm doing here if you guys see look I'm kind of pulling it and ripping it off of the off of the stem. I want it to be longer without cutting the whole thing apart. So you see how I'm kind of like pulling it away. It always, every single one of these has their own metal wire to it. So I, I got a, a good, what, what would you say? I got a good half an inch extra wire off of that before I cut it. And since it's kind of a, a little bit of a mess the way I did that, I'm going to put a steel pick on it just to kind of secure that plastic down and also extend it out just a little bit more makes it a little bit longer for me um, to fill this gap back here and the, the leaf came off of it so I'm gonna put a dab of glue right there <sighs> just on that little piece that the leaf goes on to that way I can ensure that the leaf won't come off again I mean to honestly to go through and glue every single flower or bud or leaf or things on it's kind of like tedious and just not realistic it's not going to happen um the amount of time you would spend on a project you'd have to charge so much money that it wouldn't be wouldn't be cost effective but if you have a few things that you can catch here and there that are kind of being problem children you see how this is kind of adding it's going to go a little bit deeper kind of like about right here so do you see me moving it it's this guy right here right here behind here this guy right here see without it you got a big hole I'm gonna add it in just enough back here kind of in the behind the scenes so you still see the green you still see the lime green you see that it's perfect right there and it fills that hole in and I don't have to worry about taking out too much I don't really need to worry about taking away from the height of it I mean you know I don't want to I didn't want to cover up my handle here so what do you guys think you like Thank you for the hearts. You guys are so nice. I love seeing that stuff crumb fly across the page. So here you got just enough to kind of hide that hole. We filled a hole. There is a hole, not in my heart, but in my arrangement. <laughs> that was my cheese ball for the day, guys. That was my Sunday cheese ball. I'm loving this. Absolutely loving this. This is so stinking cute. Oy, I love it. All right, last but not least, I'm going to see if there's any other way... I don't think I see any other holes. Do you, there's a tiny one right there. Hold on. Let me peek and just see different angles. Still have this guy down here. Peeking at it. I just want to make sure there's no like crazy holes. Like even from the side here. If you look from the side, you can't see in. So if you're looking at the arrangement at the side, the front, I don't see any big holes. I don't see anything really. I mean, if you're this tall, still you don't see you can't see down in I'm gonna fill the back of this up here with more ficus leaves because that's basically pretty cheap and cost-effective um, 
because I'm gonna, I save these for the back of reeds. These are really good size. Something like this size, I wouldn't save. You could use these in the back of it too because they're kind of hard to, to cover up things on a wreath. But these larger, thicker leaves, I would save them to use them on the back of your wreaths. They're much, much, you see how big they are? They cover a lot of ground. Um, so maybe I'd probably use this back here. Just a lot of these, oh, this too. These aren't that good to cover up things, so I'll probably just put all these in the back of the, on the back of the arrangement. A lot of steel picks will be involved, or, you know, using using the actual stem attached to that would be that would be involved as well. I got one more of these guys I'm gonna place in here real quick too because I already I already put it on a pick. And that girl she's gonna go right up here. This is her new home. Right there. All right, guys, this is super cute. Oh, I, okay, so let's start adding these little girls in real quick. And this is going to just, I bet you anything, this is going to be just the last little bit that you're like, yep, it's perfect. It couldn't need anything else. What I'm going to do is, this is basically what it looks like. Push your greenery up towards your bud. And then cut it off. Again, cut it off longer than you need it. That's actually going to be too long for where I plan on putting these in at. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Yeah, a little bit too long, but it's not horrible. So if you got greenery on the stem, I like to pull it up towards it. See, this is a little bit different of a leaf. And they're kind of, these things are like a hard plastic, if you can tell. They're a really hard plastic. And I think that's what makes them so cute. If they had been, you know, a, a sort of a fabric or a different type of like, oh, I don't know, vinyl or whatever, it wouldn't, if they had been made out of the same thing as a leaf, it wouldn't look as cute. The hard the hard plastic of it is what's making them, I think, look so realistic. They're like almost really shiny. And I love them. I love them. Yeah, this is a little bit long. I don't like, do you see this one, guys? I don't really like this leaf. It's like, it covers up most of it. So I'm just going to take it off. Every once in a while, you don't. You don't have to have greenery on everything. Like, I didn't, that's just weird. I didn't like it. It was too much. So that guy's going to go in on its own. I got three of them. I think I'll put six of them on here. Oh, there's only... Six, seven. There's eight of them on the bush, so I mean, might as well at this point maybe add them all. We'll see how it goes. I just don't know if they'll actually be seen from the back of the arrangement if I left them really long. Let's see how it looks, guys. And I don't need a steel pick because this is a pretty strong, thick wire. So let's see. Joanne Sanchez, beautiful. Thank you. Gina Gray, first time, first timer, loving watching you. Thank you, Gina. Welcome to the channel, or the channel, my YouTube channel. I'm, as for my YouTube people, I upload everything to YouTube. Thank you. Uh, where did you get the container? Jan, I got it at Hobby Lobby. In perfect color for the eucalyptus. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yep, Hobby Lobby, guys. It was the umbrellas from Hobby Lobby. Beautiful, you're so talented. Thank you, Patricia. And Katrina, hello. Lily of the Valley has a lot of a lot of leaves. Oh yeah, they just. I think this part of it was like it covers it up so much you couldn't really. I didn't. I didn't like it, so I took it off. I left this on. <laughs> this one's cute. Let's see if I can get this in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm probably gonna add all eight pieces. The whole bundle wasn't expensive. This whole bundle was four seventy seven on at Michael's. I got it for fifty percent off, so five dollars is not bad. And obviously my glue is probably already dried. I didn't get it in where I wanted it. There we go. Yes. Oh, so cute. Hold on. Hold on guys. I'm gonna add there's the one I cut that I thought was super short. <clears throat> Add this one right up front here. And then I'll show you how I... How 
I got this and then I'll hold it up. And basically I'm just going to, I'm going to add the whole bun. I've got two more left on that bundle. I'm just going to cut it off and add them all in. They're just, it adds that extra little pop of white. What do you think guys? See that? Kind of sticks out here and sticks out here. Oh, so cute. So cute. I love flowers. I just, something about me and flowers was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely working out perfectly. And this was a last minute too. I have the whole arrangement sitting in my cart while I was walking through Michael's for a long while. And then at the last minute, I did another circle. You guys, I'm like, I'm a habitual, like, anytime I get flowers at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, I'll go into the section, I'll look at everything, I'll leave with whatever I've picked out for that particular arrangement, and then it never fails. I end up back in the same spot, looking at the same stuff again, just to see if there's anything I missed. And a lot of times, having like a small little break, even while I'm still shopping, you just take a break from looking at florals or, or thinking about your project. Just take a small break and then come back to it and you'd be amazed at how you missed like five or six things or you know, can tell like you, your mind's had a little bit of a, you know, a, a 15 minute relaxation break from trying to think and process and flowers, flowers, flowers. And then I came back, this is what I did at Michael's, I came back to the same section and I saw these, um, Lily of the Valleys, and I thought, you know what, those would be perfect for what I've already put together. So, I grabbed them. Because apparently, it was meant to be, right? I'll go back two or three times. So I also I say I won't torture my husband by making him come with me, because I really do spend a lot of time in the craft store. I do it a lot. And I don't want to torture him, because I don't want him to do that to me at the electronics store. <laughs> I really, I was like, look, I love you, but I can't stay in Fry's and Best Buy that long. I will lose my mind. I will go insane and take you with me, like, off of Beetlejuice, the movie. If you do not let me gut this house and make it my own, I will go insane and I will take you with me. Oh, jeez, you guys are so cute. So cute. Perfect. Perfect. That's what I got so far with all these little Lily of the Valleys. You see, the, it's like just like a little tiny pop of white, little berry, oh, just little tiny cuteness. All right, I got two more. I'm going to hold it up and show you. And then what I'll do is, um, if you want, I'll take a picture of the back of it. I don't think you guys really want to watch me just put ficus leaves in the back. What do you guys think? Love it. Love the lilies. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I've ever made one with a real umbrella. Jan, no, I haven't, but I'm, I'm willing to try. Um, I know a Mill and Dill designs I'd mentioned before earlier in my live stream, uh, Terry Marshall from Mill and Dill. She actually has a tutorial that you can purchase on how to use those little craft ones from Hobby Lobby. And, um, I know her and, and she's done a super, super cute job with a lot of those and they're kind of papery. They're the, the craft ones you can get in the party aisle at Hobby Lobby. They're kind of a papery type. Um, oh, I'm bending this one down, you guys. I took this one, I pushed it in, and I bent it forward. And look at that. Oh, look how cute that is. I pushed it in and I bent it forward so it's coming down a little bit. I'm loving every second of that. I'm trying to look for an empty spot. I think I need to put one right here. Yeah, neat one needs to go right here. And that's the last I have of the Lily of the Valley. Um, but the craft, they're the little craft umbrellas you get at Hobby Lobby down like in the birthday section. And they're kind of papery, and but they're super, super cute. Um, shows a tutorial that I would look into purchasing if you guys want to see me do that. I mean, it's a purchased, it's a purchased tutorial, so I don't know that if, I mean, I could use them to sell them on my Etsy shop, but I do not think I can actually show you step by step the way that they did it. Because I'm purchasing a tutorial from someone else. It wouldn't be wouldn't be ethical to purchase her tutorial and then show you guys how to do it. Ugh. But I could probably look up a way to do my own type of uh, umbrella with maybe a real umbrella. Um, 
you know, like the big wooden handled ones, those really cute ones. I know there's a way that you don't have to fill them up. There's also some YouTube videos on how to do some crazy, you know, larger umbrellas, maybe something not so permanent. Oh, uh, let's see. Always go back to look at things again. Perfect. Yes. Good. Me. I'm not alone. Good, Betty. You do that too. Same for me. Spend hours looking. Yeah, I'll be at the store for three, four hours. I guarantee you. No problem. Like, oh, I'm only going to be there 20 minutes. And then literally three hours later, it's like, oh, I'm hungry. It's past dinner. It's almost closing. Have I been here that long? Yes, I agree. <laughs> Lilies of the Valley in our garden when I was growing up. So pretty. They smell great. And they'll take over the whole yard if you let. Oh, so they're like, uh, they're, they grow. They're like ground cover because that would be amazing. From... Mom and Grandma, Stacy Lucas. Oh, hi, that's my mother-in-law. Hi, hi, Stacy. Yeah, my my sister's name is Stacy. My mother-in-law's name is Stacy. One of my good friends from my my job, her name is Stacy. There's lots of Stacys in my lives, guys. Lily of the Valley just tops the arrangement off, gorgeous. Thank you, Martha. I appreciate that. So here you go, guys. That's it. Look how pretty that is. I love the movement. Again, I know it's not going to do this on the wall or the door, but it's just it just makes me happy. I can't help it. And then again, I kind of did lose that handle just a little bit, you guys. You can still see it right here. But we're going to put it up against the wall like this. So you get that little bit of uh, interest down here at the bottom. You can still see it. And we did lose the diagonal. You know, you, all the little extra points under here. But you still know it's an umbrella. And it's just super cute. Right? What do you guys think? I'm not going to put any ribbon. I like. Th I think the flowers are doing what they're supposed to do on their own. I don't want to put ribbon in here, you guys. I think it's pretty the way it is. What do you think? Beautiful. Check Pinterest for umbrella design. Yeah, Ing, that's a really good place to get inspiration, too. Pinterest is a really wonderful place, especially if you get, like, creator's block. Just take a look at Pinterest and then put your own. Remember I said, stay consistent and you'll always be original. Take what you see on Pinterest or what you see other creators do and then add whatever your personality is to it and you'll always be original. Stay consistent. You'll always be original. You won't have to worry about copying anyone, but we all get inspiration from each other, right? That's why we're all here. Looks good. Beautiful, beautiful, fabulous. Love it. Very pretty, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, guys. Perfect. Thanks. So like I said, I'm going to fill this in. I'll put a picture on Facebook so you can see exactly how I filled it in. And you will not see that because to me, it's important. If it's not important to you, then again, remember, do what makes you happy. I'm going to fill this in with more ficus leaves so you don't see the styrofoam. And then there's the hanger that we did at the very beginning so you can't see that. And that's basically, basically, basic. I just said basically like three times. Okay. That's basically it. I had a little bit of struggle at the beginning, but I'm really glad you guys were here with me. I appreciate all of you. Um, let's see. Gorgeous ribbon would be overkill. Yep, I agree, Dell. That's why, yeah. No, no ribbon. No ribbon. No ribbons. It's gorgeous. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Thanks, you guys. But you gained so much. Fabulous. Thank you, Missy and Kathy. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you so much. If you're watching the playback on YouTube right now, um, stay tuned. I'll have still pictures at the very end. And then, of course, on YouTube and then Facebook. YouTube is my discussion tabs. On Facebook, I'll put a post out as soon as I get Patreon up and running. You guys take a look and see if there's any benefits or any things you guys would like to sign up for maybe one-on-one -on -one or group classes with me. Um, I'm going to work all that stuff out coming up in the next few weeks. And um, thank you, everyone, so much. You guys are all so great and wonderful. I love doing this with you. It's fun to have company while I'm crafting. Um, and uh, until next time, you guys, take care. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.